So we've had a look at uniform charge distributions, but what about non-uniform ones, such as if we had a linear charge density described by lambda is equal to 2x plus 3, or a volume charge density described by rho is equal to 3r plus 4. Well, if we wanted to calculate the electric field in this case, the method to calculate it is very similar to the uniform case, except that dq depends upon the location that we're considering. So we do need to take that into account. Now, the other thing that you can ask, be asked for situations like this is to calculate the total charge on the object. And in order to do that, you need to integrate the charge density over the entire object. So in order to see how to do this, I think it's easiest if we have a look at an example. So the problem is, a rod has a charge distribution described by lambda is equal to 2x plus 3 coulombs per metre. One end of the rod is at 0, 0, and the other end is at 2, 0. Part A, what is the total charge of the rod? Part B, what is the electric field at 3, 0? Okay, so to start this problem, let's draw a diagram. So we've got a rod. It's got one end at x equals 0. The other end is at x equals 2. And we're particularly interested in the electric field at this point, x equals 3. Now, for part A, to calculate the total charge, we have to integrate lambda over the length of the rod. So we need to work out what's lambda dx. So we know that lambda is given by the expression 2x plus 3 and that one end of the rod is at x equals 0 and the other end is at x equals 2. So we just need to solve this integral. So to solve this integral, when we integrate 2x, we get x squared. When we integrate 3, we get 3x and we're evaluating this at 0 and 2. So this is equal to 4 plus 3 times 2 is 6, minus 0. So this is equal to 10 coulombs is our total charge. Now, it's always a good idea just to make sure that this makes sense. So if we think about this first meter of the rod between x equals 0 and x equals 1, lambda at this end is 3 coulombs per meter. At x equals 1, we've got 5 coulombs per meter. So the average value of lambda along this part is 4 coulombs per meter. And for that's for 1 meter. So we'd expect this, because this is linear, to have a total charge of 4 coulombs. And then at this end of the rod, at x equals 2, we've got 7 coulombs per meter. So the average along this second meter of the rod is 6 coulombs, and it is 1 meter, so we'd expect 6 coulombs there, and 4 plus 6 gives us the 10 coulombs. So that does seem like a reasonable answer. Okay, now for part B, we're now trying to work out what the electric field is here. So we're going to do that in the normal way. We'll consider a little increment of the rod with a length dx, and this is a distance x from one end of the rod. And so the electric field due to that little increment dx, dE is equal to k dq, and then divided by the distance from here to here, so that's 3 minus x squared, and so we just need to work out what dq is, and we know that dq is equal to lambda times dx, and lambda in this case is a variable, so it's 2x plus 3 dx, so this will be different for different x values. And so we can say, well, e is going to be equal to the integral of this. So we've got the integral of k times 2x plus 3 dx. I'm just substituting this in for this. And then we're dividing by 3 minus x. And that's squared. And we're integrating along the rod from 0 to 2. 
So now we've got an integral that we're going to need to solve. It's slightly annoying integral to solve, but what we can do is let's pull the k out the front and then we can write this as the integral from 0 to 2. Um, on the bottom, we've got 3 minus x squared. So it may be helpful to expand those brackets. So we've got 3 minus 6x plus x squared. And things which are easy to integrate is if we had the derivative of this on top of this. So we can say, well, up here, let's put 2x minus 6. And so that's accounted for the 2x, but we've subtracted 6 when we had to add 3. So then what we've got left is the 9 divided by the same thing. But here, let's not expand these brackets. Okay, so now we've written it this way. It's now not as hard to integrate. So now we've got k and um, because this is the derivative of this, we can write this as log of 3 minus x squared. And then when we differentiate this, sorry, integrate this, we've got 9. And then the derivative of minus x is minus 1. Um, we need to multiply it by minus 1 because this thing we're thinking of as 9 times 3 minus x to the minus 2. So this is the minus 1 from there. And then this is 3 minus x to the minus 1. And we're evaluating this at 0 and 2. Okay, so we can write this as k. This becomes 2 log 3 minus x. Um, those negatives cancel out. And we've got plus 9 over 3 minus x, which we're evaluating at 2 and 0. And so this is equal to k times 2 log. And we'll substitute in the 2. So this is 3 minus 2, which is 1. Log of 1 is 0. Plus 9 over 3 minus 2 is 1. And then minus, we're substituting in the 0. So 2 log 3 and then minus 9 over 3. So this is equal to k outside of 9 minus 3, so that's 6, minus 2 log 3. So we can now evaluate this because we know that k is 9 times 10 to the 9 times 6 minus 2 log Three, and remember, this is log to the base e. And so this is equal to 3.4 times 10 to the 10 newtons per coulomb. And that's to the right. Or we could just give it with one significant figure. We could write this as 3 times 10 to the 10 newtons per coulomb to the right as these locations are only given with one significant figure.